You don't have to wait until Sunday rolls around to cook a roast. I could eat a roast every night of the week. Imagine if you could cook a roast on your barbecue, but with real wood-fired flavor. And guess what? You can do exactly that with a smoke fire without getting your hands dirty in charcoal, messing around with wood chips or building fires. So now you can have a roast every night of the week. So today we are going to cook a beautiful roast chicken, roast ladle lamb, and a heap of delicious roast veggies. Traditionally, when we talk about barbecuing, we talk about setting your barbecue up for direct or indirect cooking. So indirect cooking is roasting. Whenever you want to adapt a roasting recipe for your smoke fire, it is as easy as setting your temperatures between 190 to 230 degrees. Today, we're going to cook our roast leg of lamb and chicken at 200 degrees, and it's going to be unreal. As soon as you can see that wonderful smoke, you can close the lid. Our barbecue's preheating, so let's get prepping our meat. When it comes to lamb, I find it so hard to go past just garlic and rosemary. So I'm going to show you a way that you can inject those flavors right into our lamb. So I'm gonna start peeling some garlic. So now that our garlic is peeled, we just wanna create some little slivers. Slice it and just some fine little slivers. They are perfect. All right, now that we have our rough little slivers, we're going to prepare our rosemary. Got some beautiful rosemary here, and we just want to create little sprigs. So just pull it off, or you can cut it. It smells so amazing. Rosemary is so easy to grow in your garden, so steal a little bit off someone's bush on the side of the road and stick it in your garden. It's, it'll go crazy. I'm going to have the best smelling hands around turn, I think. Our garlic and rosemary is done. Now we can move on to our lamb. All that we need to do is get a sharp knife and then we can cut some incisions into the lamb. That way we have a little hole that we can poke our garlic and rosemary right into it so those flavors get deep inside the lamb. Again, this is where you can go crazy with as much or as little as you'd like. I like lots of garlic, lots of rosemary. So I'm going to go crazy here. All right. Now we can get a little sliver of garlic and a piece of rosemary, and then just push that into the incision there. And you don't want the rosemary sticking out too far, otherwise it will burn, so just stick it in. That is perfect. And then we can keep going the whole way over the lamb. Imagine bringing this off the barbecue, your guests are all sitting down around the table, and you just put down a nice, beautiful leg of lamb like this in front of them. So good. And now we just need a little drizzle of olive oil. And then you just grab a lemon, slice it in half. Perfect. And then we can squeeze that all over. Ooh, look at that, how amazing. And then keep this other half. What you can do is pop this onto the cooking grill, let it caramelize. All those juices will sweeten up. And then once your lamb is finished, drizzle a decent amount of delicious caramelized lemon all over. Then I think we just need to season with salt and pepper. And our lamb is done. It's chicken time. All right, to prepare a whole roast chicken, I do have some really simple tips. This guarantees a really good result. First step, just tuck the wing tips back behind the head like is chilling, and this will stop the tips from burning. So just tuck them in and under. Now, this isn't very glamorous, but it does help prevent any flare ups inside the barbecue. Just pull out these clumps of fat. They just pull straight off. Nice, simple and easy. And we can get rid of them. And then with our chicken to make him sit up and look really nice and proud, we're going to tie his legs together. So I'm just gonna get some string. That'll do. Now turn this around so you can see what I'm doing here. So about halfway along the string, tuck that under the tail. I just like to use that as a bit of an anchor there. And cross that over, go around the drumsticks, cross it over again, and then back under. Oh, look at that. Sits nice and tight and tie that together. And that's done. 
Now, please do not stuff your chickens with stuffings. Those bread-based stuffings absorb those precious meat juices you want to keep inside your meat. So if you have to have soggy bread, cook your stuffing on the side. All right, time to season our chicken. I am just using olive oil, salt and pepper. It's a good idea to get your ingredients ready in little bowls so you're not cross-contaminating chicken everywhere. But I am lucky, I have a special helper with me today. Liam, do you mind giving me a hand? No problem. All right, so let's get some olive oil first. Give it a nice little massage while we're here. And then we can go salt and pepper. And pepper. How good. Flip it over and same on the other side. Now make sure you get into all the little cracks and crevices, all the delicious parts. This skin on the smoke fire goes so golden, crispy and delicious. Salt and pepper is all you need. Thanks, Liam. Let's face it, roasts aren't cheap. The best way to guarantee that you're going to perfectly cook a roast every time is to use meat probes. You have one meat probe included with the barbecue. You can connect your barbecue up to your phone via the Connect app, and that way you get perfect results every time. So to probe a chicken, we want to get the tip of the probe in the middle of the breast, near the cavity, but not touching it. So I'm just going to measure with my fingers about the middle part and then insert that in. Now probe is in the middle. And that way we can make sure our chicken is perfectly cooked every time. And onto our lamb. So same theory here with the probe. You want to get the tip in the very middle, but not touching any bones. So measure about halfway down, mark your fingers on the probe and then just insert it. And that's it. These guys are ready for the barbecue. Our lamb's going to take a little longer to cook so I'm going to pop that on first. Straight on. Look at that. Now we need to get a heat proof glove on so we can thread our probe cord through safely. Look at that. Close that lid. Plug it in. I love lamb when it's cooked perfectly medium, nice and blushing pink on the inside. So I'm going to set our temperature for 54 degrees. This is medium rare, but then we take it off the barbecue and let it rest for about 10 to 15 minutes and they will rise to perfect medium. So let's set our target cord temperature, 54, continue, probe one, start, done. I can go do something else and my phone will tell me when it's perfectly cooked. It's been about 15 minutes, let's get our chicken on. We'll have a sneak peek at the lamb too. Oh, look at that. Let's get our chicken right on there. Put our heat proof glove on. Thread the cords through. Now we can close the lid. Within this Connect app, there's a whole range of step-by-step -step cook programs. So if you need a little assistance when it comes to barbecuing, use these. So we already have a whole chicken in this cook program. Look at that. Scroll down, whole chicken. We're using probe two. And then there's all this content, like how to set up your barbecue, how to prepare your chicken, how to season it, get it ready, and how to put it onto the barbecue. I remember when I first started at Weber, I was talking to one of the managers. I was cooking this chicken. I put the chicken on the barbecue upside down. It was so embarrassing. Use these cook programs. You'll avoid all of my embarrassment and you'll nail it every time. Time to get our roast veggies onto the barbecue. We have a beautiful range here. It's winter time, so I'm using seasonal ingredients. We've got potatoes, carrots, radishes, zucchini. If it's summertime, roast up some beetroot, grilled corn, asparagus, mix it in with some salad leaves and top it with balsamic glaze. Yum, perfect summer night feasting food. Let's get these guys on. Have a look at that. I'm going to pop them onto the top of the barbecue. We've got two cooking grills here, so just fill it full of food. Now radishes and zucchini won't take as long to cook, so I'll leave them until a bit later. The Connect app has just gone off. It's saying our roasts are ready. Let's have a look. 
Oh, wow. They look so amazing, beautifully golden. Can you see how crispy that chicken skin is? I cannot wait to eat these. I have to get them off the barbecue now. Our roasts are off the barbecue and are looking amazing, but we do need to let them rest for about 10 to 15 minutes. We need the muscles to relax, the juices to redistribute, but you don't want to cut into steaming hot meat, otherwise that's moisture lost. But what we can do is finish our lamb off with our caramelized lemon. This hands down is the best way to carve a leg of lamb. So you carve just as much as you need for your guests so the rest stays nice, warm and juicy. Now first we can remove all these bits of rosemary. They've done their job. Last little bit, we'll grab that guy. All right, so what we do is get a sharp knife and now you can slice down at this shank end, nice thin slices all the way down until you can feel the bone. So that's probably enough to say for one or maybe two people. Got a bit of a crowd here, so I'm gonna keep going a little bit more. All the way down. So then this part can stay warm and juicy, and then we just slice off, just like that. And you get these beautiful slices. And then we can pop that onto our serving board. Now that we have the perfect amount for a couple people, I'm just going to leave this here. This will make amazing leftovers for tomorrow. It's a perfect little piece behind to try. It is so juicy. So delicious. I got a nice bit of that crispy fat too. Yum, my favorite part. All right, let's clean this up. Get it ready for our chicken. I used to always be afraid of carving chickens and always got my dad to do it. I reckon I could take him on in a carving competition now. What I like to do is use two different knives. So I've got a boning knife here and like a chef's knife. So first we'll cut the strings off the back. Maybe I'll turn that around so you guys can see. Take those bits off, unravel it there. So get your boning knife and go in between the thigh and the breast just there. Slice down, but not all the way. You don't want to cut through that bone, otherwise you could damage your knife. And this is why I like to do it with my hands as well, because I can feel a pop and then I can just easily slice through. Look at that, beautiful, delicious Maryland. And do the other side, slice down, through that skin, just pop that out, pop, and then slice through. Oh, look how golden that skin is. That's underneath the chicken, amazing. And now we can remove the breast. So I just like to slice down either side of the breastbone, down along, and then just work your way around with your boning knife. Just trying not to cut into the cavity there. And that piece will come off. Oh, might need to pop to the other side. Lovely, and we'll sit that there just while we cut the other side off. And I like to leave the wings on here still. Makes it a bit of an anchoring point so it's not sliding everywhere over the board. Cut that side off down and make sure you save the chicken carcass make some beautiful stock out of it I think stocks are regular in my house almost every week throw in some onions carrot celery amazing oh I want to make sure we keep all that delicious skin on look at that two beautiful breast pieces and then we'll just slice down alongside of the wing and again use that pop method so we're not damaging our knives and then slice through. Slice, pop, and then slice. Beautiful. And now this is where I swap over to the chef's knife and make some beautiful slices. And this way, every person that gets a piece of that meat gets a little slither of that delicious skin too. Slide your knife under and then we can pop that onto our board. And do the same with the other one. Last piece, delicious. Everything's carved, ready for me to dig in. I've been waiting for this all day. I love just a simple roast chicken on the smoke fire. It has this beautiful crispy skin. Here's the taste test. 
Mmm, so juicy. But also, there's that smokiness from the wood-fired flavor. So amazing. I cannot wait until you guys cook up a roast on your smoke fire. Make sure you take some pictures and videos, upload them to the socials and tag us.